Hi, I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I'll talk to you about the navigation in SharePoint Online. Of course, most of it applies also to SharePoint 2013 and 2016, but I'm showing it in SharePoint Online. The built-in navigation consists of two parts. First of all, you have this part up here, which is called the top navigation. And then you have this part to the left, which is called the quick launch. As you see, both of them have these edit links here. If they don't appear, that could depend on two things. Either you don't have the permissions to actually modify the navigation in the site, or also you are on a subsite. This kickoff 2018 site is a subsite which is inheriting the same navigation. And as you see, when I go in there, the edit links disappear on that site. If I go back, I can edit the top navigation here and it will appear on both of these sites, of course. So usually the top navigation is used for showing places you can go. In SharePoint terms, that means SharePoint's sites where you have content. The quick launch, the left navigation here, is information that's contained within the place you are. So context or apps within the site where you are. So this link here is a link to documents within the home site. If I click on the document link here, it will take me to the document library in the kickoff 2018 site. So that's usually how you work with it. To um, modify these links, you click on the edit links. And here you can drag and drop the links, which is somewhat tricky to do. And you can also create new links. You can either add links here, for example, just accountstrom.com website, and then put in the address like that. As you see, there are very few options, but one thing that you can do that is rather cool is you just do this, like websites. And if you don't put an address in there, it will still work, but then you can use that as a type of navigation. If you very carefully drop in this there and then save it, you'll see that I have a little drop down there. I can't click on the website because that, that doesn't do anything. It just takes you back to where you are but uh, you can click on the other links, of course. So that's working with the top navigation. You can also work with the top navigation from under site settings, where you have the top link bar, it's that one there. And you can do very few things. You can just change the order and, um, and create new navigation links there. But in some cases, it might be easier than, than working with the edit links here. But those are the same thing. The same principles apply in the edit links for the Quick launch navigation, you can edit those links. You can drag and drop the links and change the order of them. You can also do a kind of hierarchy. So for example, if I drop the pages under documents, that looks like a hierarchy. Usually if you have multiple document libraries, for example, you can create a dummy link there that doesn't have a target and then just put the different document libraries under there. That's a rather useful way of doing it. Then you save, of course. And in the same way, you can go into site settings and change the quick launch there. And as you see, you can do a bit of modifications here. Just click on this to edit it. You can see that it's um, fitted under the heading documents like that. You can delete the link and you can create new navigation links or new headings. So that's about it. That's what you can do with navigations. You can do hierarchies, you can add links to internal content or external content, of course. Say that you don't want the procedures document library to appear in the quick launch here. You can go into the library settings and then under navigation, you can just say no there and you see that will disappear from the quick launch navigation. So that's another way to control your navigation. Another thing that you might want to do is enable the publishing infrastructure on your site. So I'm going to go in and do that that will give you more control over your navigation. Do that by going into the site collection features and then scroll to the very bottom here and you'll find the SharePoint server publishing infrastructure. And now it's uh, working on that. Usually it takes a few seconds for that to appear. Now you see up here that it's waiting for it. Here we go, SharePoint server publishing infrastructure is now activated so you can deactivate it again. Very good. So let's scroll up and go back into site settings. And now you've seen that the uh, top link bar and the quick launch are no longer here. Instead, they've been replaced by the navigation. And in that navigation now, the 
top link bar is no longer called the top link bar. It's now called global navigation. And you can have some options here like show subsites. So if I click that, it's going to appear down here. Now you see I actually got two kickoff 2018, the kickoff. That was the first one I did. Now that I enable the show subsites, uh, it, and uh, it set that up. So it's actually better to have a real object. This is kind of a dead link. So it's better to have this object here. So I'm going to remove the double there, of course. And the other navigation that we have is, of course, the quick launch, which is now called the current navigation. So as you see, with the publishing infrastructure enabled, you have a lot more options in terms of what you can do. For example, I'm going to add a new link here now. And you'll notice that the dialogue for entering a new link is much more complex. For example, you can open that link in a new window, and you can also put an audience to decide who is going to see this link. So that's uh, rather powerful. That concludes my demo on the built-in navigation options in SharePoint Online. Thank you for watching.